Hello, have a great day, everyone. Welcome to this session provided by TDRA. Thank you so much, TDRA, for this great opportunity to uh, uh, give this session about analytical thinking and innovation. I'm Nadal Mace. I'm a university instructor. I'm a certified trainer from New Minds. It's about STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, divergent thinking, and changing mindsets. So our topic today is analytical thinking and innovation. This course provides a wide knowledge of how to analyze and use innovative thinking to leverage their business performance. So uh, as businesses, you can leverage your performance by having this analytical thinking and creative thinking. And as individuals as well, you can be innovative. You can uh, use this analytical thinking uh, methodologies and techniques in order to innovate for your own self. It offers an understanding of different types of innovative thinking models and a clear and systematic approach to innovative thinking. Throughout this course, learners will have the opportunity to practice using an innovative thinking model in the training and develop a plan for applying innovative thinking as a consistent process. So innovative thinking is a process that you can maintain in your own personality or you can have it in your own or in your organization to uh, sustain, uh, to be a sustainable business, to survive and to compete as well. The learning objectives are number one, the need for analytical thinking. Number two, applications of analytical thinking. Number three, steps in analytical thinking. Number four, learning mind mapping. Number five, what is innovation? Number six, understanding where our innovative thinking comes from, how the brain works. Number seven, industry examples of innovative thinking in action. Number eight, innovation applied. And number nine, models for applying innovative thinking. So we'll be going through these points. Let's start by defining analytical thinking. What is analytical thinking? It is examining the information, collecting the facts, and checking whether the statement follows logically in identifying causes and effects. So it is a higher level of thinking and one of the top soft skills that you must have and it refers to the ability of an individual to analyze information and solve complicated issues on the basis of that information. So basically, analytical thinking is mainly used to solve problems. And um, when we say problems, like, you know, every organization is confronting several types of problems on a daily basis or like not on a daily basis, but like, uh, uh, frequently and uh, uh, usually they face uh, problems or decisions that they must take. So analytical thinking serves this uh, 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 this uh, process. Analytical thinking enables you to identify problems. Clearly identifying problems is a very important step as whenever you clearly understand the problem and you understand it very well, uh, you then uh, can uh, can, can figure out the proper solutions for this problem. Extract information from data. You know, we infer information from data. We come like, we um, uh, we have the, the processing of data so it can become information. So that's why we extract information from data. Information comes from raw facts from data. And reach workable solutions for the identified problems. So we need workable solutions, not only solving problems theoretically or uh, just uh, writing the solutions or understanding, but we need to practically solve these problems. Analytical thinkers have the capability to work as a team. This is very critical. Teamwork is essential nowadays and help their teams make informed decisions, collect new ideas and work towards growth in their mindset. So changing mindsets, working towards the future, the growth of the whole organization and the growth of ourselves as well. And eventually we are part of the organization and our skills and growth is added up to others growth and skills. So it will be reflected on the whole organizational growth and success. 
Okay, so analytical thinking leads to innovative ideas. So you can you can come up with lots of creative and innovative ideas, and these ideas are used to solve problems and to effectively make decisions. And again, I'm talking about whether it's on a personal basis or organizational basis, and mainly analytical thinking serves the purpose of um, I said sustaining businesses and growing businesses, also uh, the business value, creating value for these businesses, which makes profitability, loyalty also from customers and employees to the whole organization. Applications of analytical thinking. So analytical thinking is applied in the following areas. Brainstorming ideas. You know, when we all sit together, we can just speak up whatever comes to our minds. We can write them down. This is how we brainstorm. Uh, we, we let go of our, we, we unleash what, what we have. Just let go of, let the flow really flows. So uh, all the ideas will come up and an idea after the other. And every time we think more and ideas comes and we express ourselves, we are just digging deeper and deeper in our brains so we can come up with more ideas. Detecting patterns, observing data, the visualizations, collecting and uh, using the data, interpreting and uh, relating this data, analyzing the data, integrating new information with each other, of course. And this is the point where we reach out, where we can make decisions and solve problems synthesize the information all together, and now we can make the decisions based on the identified situation. Analytical thinking steps. There are several steps that you can take in order to think analytically. Number one, you have to gather information. Gathering information nowadays is much easier than ever before, as you have the online tools, you have websites, the internet is available, um, you can go have uh, take some researches, uh, do some searches, but um, uh, a hint here, like over gathering, except like, I mean, like the more you gather information, more than what is needed is just equal to the less of the amount of information, because this will make you uh, um, uh, just lose your time, waste your time, just lose your focus on what you're focusing on, have more having more and more information. The key here is like the, the information must be accurate, relevant, and timely, fresh. We have to gather all necessary information that are relevant to the situation in hand. Number two, divide the information into parts. And we have to break down this information into smaller pieces and then uh, uh, relate these pieces all together, examine the parts to find connections and relationships. These divided small parts must be connected all together to figure out where are the connections, where are the relationships, the, the connections between them so we can, uh, we can proceed with uh, the steps of analytical thinking. Number four, formulate theories. Here we infer from, uh, uh, from other info, from all the info actually that we have, and we can draw uh, logical conclusions by formulating these theories. Now we have to test the theories that we have formulated and uh, to, confirm, to confirm that our understanding of the problem given and the situation in hand uh, is, is really clear and the reasons behind this problem are very, very clear to us as whenever you understand the reasons behind, you just can achieve the uh, solution much easier and uh, more accurate. Test theories. Now you have to test the theories in order to um, make sure that and like match which solution matches this problem and which solution is applicable for this problem as some solutions that we infer might not work properly or effectively for the problem that we have. So now you have to test the theories, develop possible solutions. We have to develop possible solutions based on the logic that we have. Be reasonable, be logical. And finally, evaluate solutions so you can find out which 
solutions among these that you came up with are gonna solve this problem. Sometimes you will find one solution, sometimes you can find several ones. So uh, you will have the priorities and you will see which one is the most appropriate one to solve the solution. Something that you have to keep in mind, you must keep uh, a record in your organization, in the library, in the archive. You must keep records of these situations that you confronted, the problems, how did you solve these problems, and what went right, what went wrong, and give some feedback at the end. So you can learn. This is the way how an organization learns and becomes a learning organization. And this is how you can save lots of money, time, and efforts in terms of facing future, future problems as you can have a history that you can make use of. These future problems might be similar to the ones you faced in the past or might be identical sometimes or you can benefit from, get inspired from uh, previous uh, solutions that you had in the organization. Now we come to mind mapping. Mind mapping is very important in terms of uh, analytical thinking. It is part of it, actually. Mind mapping is just like, if you, if you look at this uh, image here, you can see a map, okay? So here and there, several colors, uh, different... Um, fonts, um, uh, uh, different also thickness of uh, uh, the drawings, different pens used, you know. Actually, it's a graphical way to represent ideas and concepts. This is mind mapping, a visual thinking tool that helps structuring information, helping you to better analyze, comprehend, synthesize, recall, and generate new ideas. It is very important to mind map. You can do this individually and actually perfectly if you can do this as a team as you can come up with lots and lots of uh, ideas and you can express yourself more and explain more things and get to uh, infer lots of various understandings that you cannot do on an individual basis how to draw a mind map you can first uh, start in the middle of the page as you saw in in the previous slide Start in the middle of the page, by uh, in the middle of a white page, actually, an empty one, a blank one. Start in the middle of it and use different colors, use different pens and pencils, uh, have a big space. Uh, actually, an advice is to have uh, the, the paper in, in a landscape orientation, so it becomes uh, wider, so you can express uh, more ideas and write more. Number two develop so develop all the related subtopics we start with the main topic as you see here and then you write down subtopics of what you want to write then uh, number three is repeat so repeat the same process for the subtopics generated from the original topic and then the subtopics must also uh, diversify and uh, take give branches to another to other subtopics that are also related to the previous topic, which is in its turn related to the original topic. If you can just uh, 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 just look at this image and you can uh, discover what I'm talking about. So the main topic, then subtopics, then for every subtopic also we will write down more subtopics. We are we are specifying here the, the whole general thing. We are degrading things. We are dividing uh, the, the big topic into subtopics. And you see some connections, some conjunctions, some relationships. This is mind mapping. It's a whole ma map of what you are thinking about and the ideas that you are coming with and you have. So you see also in this image, Productivity. Mind mapping fosters productivity. It boosts your productivity. It also allows you to analyze. It is analyzing, actually, and it helps you to improve your an analysis. It helps to, uh, to make you dig deeper in subjects and understand them more. Sometimes mind mapping, brainstorming, uh, uh, digging for uh, reasons, root causes for problems, sometimes they cause a headache. A real headache because like you are thinking very deep you are analyzing things you are thinking 
uh, uh, creatively, you are thinking in a different way. Planning, also it enables, mind mapping enables you to strategize, to think for the long term, to plan. Collaboration, it promotes communication and teamwork. So also, uh, as I said, mind mapping is very nice if, if you do it in a team. And later on now, like we can, we will talk about some points that are really so nice if you can apply them as a team. And finally, creativity, uh, ideas, innovation. Mind mapping enables you to innovate with your ideas. And now we'll talk about innovation. Innovation is something new or a change made to an existing product, idea, or field. So it's something of, it's either you come up with a whole new thing, new concept, new idea, or it is renewing an existing product or idea or something that already exists. It comes from internal as well as external sources. So how you can innovate. So I have the skills. This is internal. This is from within. I have the analytical, analytical thinking skill. I'm thinking deeply. I'm trying to brainstorm to come up with new ideas, to try to figure out a hint that will help you, you can check out gaps in the market, things that necessities, needs, and there you can come up also with new ideas for different products. And also we must have the external sources that are uh, coming from the surrounding environment. It's the ability to take what already exists and use it in a new way. So you can also use this uh, method. You can, uh, you can start from something already existing and uh, 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 give it more, uh, progress it more, uh, maybe recreate it in another way. This is innovation. Sometimes they say innovation is thinking outside the box, but actually it's not always thinking out of the box. It is thinking with what you have and uh, uh, with a new way, uh, with, with, with the unique way, with your way, something special. So it's not only thinking out of the box and it's not always thinking out of the box. Innovative thinking requires, so to become innovative and to think innovatively, you have to be creative, thinking differently, creating things, not copying others and not photocopying, just try to be yourself and think your own way. Collaboration, this is very important. Collaborate with others, have the teamwork uh, skills and work as a team. Problem solving skills. It's important if you can solve the problems and there are uh, lots of scientific approaches in order to solve problems. Critical thinking that you must have that is very relevant to analytical thinking. Logically, reasonably, curiosity that you must have. Curiosity uh, of searching and researching things, uh, uh, looking for things thinking of new things and trying to figure out this curiosity also uh, enables your innovative thinking and finally the communication as we said you have to work in a team so communication skills are really very well needed in terms of listening and speaking skills develop innovative thinking skills how you can develop them you have to practice actually you have to practice this thing in order to be developed Number one, generate lots of ideas, lots and lots of ideas. There is no silly idea. There is no, uh, um, don't, don't ever think that this idea is silly, so I don't want to express it or no, I, I have to forget it. No, every single idea is, is worth something, is worth itself and even more. So come up with lots and lots of ideas. So you never know which, which of them is, is the key of your success, of your career path, of you becoming an entrepreneur, of your organization to succeed and to grow. Number two, combine two different ideas. Also, it's important, combining two different ideas will come up with a third idea that is very different from the first two. So uh, this is where we say collaboration is important. So two different ideas, whether they are yours or coming up from, uh, from two different people, from me and another one. So we can combine our ideas together to generate uh, um, uh, more, more um, 
uh, I mean, better idea or like bigger ideas or different, different ones. Number three, set constraints to boost your creativity. Number four, collect and manage your ideas. Number five, take time away from your desk. Uh, there's something that I have to tell you here. Write your ideas down. So sometimes you will forget them. Our brain will come up with lots and lots of ideas sometimes. You just take a note, write them down, write it aside. You might, you might be driving your car, riding your bike, maybe practicing your hobby, uh, maybe just going to bed or doing any activity in your daily life and uh, an idea comes to your mind. Just right away, write it down and then you can come, out, uh, come back to it and try to think more and more about it. Number six, adapt, adopt an experimental mindset. So be divergent in your thinking. So be open, try to experiment things. Change your mindset to become like an open, flexible one. So you can come up with these new ideas, with these innovative ideas and make use of them at the same time. Number seven, encourage team members to come up with solo ideas. So it's very important to come up with individual ideas with everyone will come up with his own idea and at the same time we can all together come up with one idea or several ideas combined together or we can follow any approach that we want but teamwork is very important here innovative thinking strategies find a room that is suited for the activity so there are some strategies that you must uh, uh, you must adapt to and adopt as well in order to have this innovative thinking. First of all, select a place, a corner. If you're an individual or an organization, take a room, a meeting room, a conference room. I don't know, make, make a specialized room for this. Have it, uh, uh, have it like having not pale colors, colorful colors, bright colors. Uh, let the spaces open. Um, let it be specialized for this innovative thinking. So this is strategy number one. This is also the first thing that you have to think of. With the positive energy, with the uh, lights, with the proper lights. Second, encourage creativity and have a sense of humor. You have to encourage the creativity, especially if you are from the top management where you have to empower your employees and encourage them to create appreciate what they think of or what they express and say also the sense of humor is very important here it's nice so this improves the innovative thinking and the idea generation use metaphors you can use metaphors you can play some games um, you can have some some a little bit of chaos in in the room where this is the way of how people think like you cannot have all things on standards with constraints no, just let it uh, flow naturally and everything. And this is how you, co you can uh, uh, encourage innovative thinking. Um, swap ideas. So if I got an idea and you got an idea, it's like I, my background is different than yours. So this is really normal where we can swap our ideas and every one of us will work on, on the other's idea. So I can work on your idea and you can work on my idea. This way also we can experience uh, um, different mentalities and different ways of thinking where uh, we can come up also with uh, lots of creative ideas and solutions. Encourage friendly competition. Competition is nice here with a friendly manner. It's not an aggressive one, but eventually we are a team and we are all working together. And get inspired. This can be done by hanging some uh, photos for people we get inspired from, hanging some uh, uh, proverbs, writing some sentences that inspire us. We can have them all in uh, this room for, for the purpose of innovative thinking. Finally, I have to thank you so much for attending this great session. It was about analytical thinking and innovation. Thank you so much, CDRA, for this great opportunity. Thank you, everyone, for your good listening.